Although the geographic coordinate system is by far the most accurate way of recording positions on Earth, it's far more common to use projected coordinate systems, especially for analyzing or mapping areas at the regional or smaller scales. Uh, projected coordinates have the advantage of treating the Earth as a flat surface, removing the concerns about curvature, and the units are more easily understood, working with linear units like meters or feet rather than degrees or minutes. There are an infinite number of possible coordinate systems, but the two most common by far are the Universal Transverse Mercator and the State Plane Coordinate System. The UTM system uh, was developed by the United States Army Corps of Engineers in the 1940s in order to create a more simplified coordinate system that was both accurate and usable around the world. Uh, the UTM system is not a single map projection. Uh, the system is, it actually it divides the Earth into 60 north-south zones that extend, as you can see here, between 84 degrees south and 80 degrees north latitude. Uh, the polar areas are covered by a system called the Universal Polar Stereographic System, which is complementary to the UTM, but we'll just focus on UTM for the moment. So each UTM zone then, again, as I said, is constructed um, from a um, secant transverse mercator projection. Uh, and so what you're seeing here is this cylindrical projection that's transversely oriented so that it is tangent along uh, a line of longitude. And so in this case, this long skinny zone here is going to be one constructed projection in such a way that the line of tangency runs right down the middle of it. So each zone has a central meridian, so to speak, and it minimizes the distortion within that particular zone. Now, within a zone, we describe locations in terms of their distance from a reference point, as we do in every chord system. And here, it's much more familiar or much more similar to a traditional Cartesian chord system because we're going to be essentially describing positions in terms of their X and Y position, X being its east-west position first, and then Y being the north-south position. Uh, here we call them eastings and northings, and so we use the easting first, the X position, uh, in terms of how far um, east a position is from our origin, and then again how far north. Within the UTM system, though, uh, what's important to understand is that it uses a false origin and it, all that means is that we shift the numbers uh, or we make them much larger so that they're always going to be positive. So there's no chance that you could end up in a part of the coordinate system that's negative. Um, and so what that means on a practical level is that we're working with fairly large numbers and that's because the origin in this case when we're working with UTM is going to be um, in on the equator uh, which is going to be thousands of miles to the south although again we're working with meters here keep that in mind and then the um, origin for Eastings is going to be about 500,000 meters to the west of the central meridian within that zone. Um, so let's kind of work with an example just to show you how this how this kind of works. So we're looking right here at one zone uh, which is in South Dakota and we're trying to describe the location of Mount Rushmore, that monument. And so the way that we do that is we're measuring the position of that point relative to our false origin, right, sitting on the equator and some distance off to the west. In fact, the origin sits kind of outside of the zone of interest here. So when we describe positions in the UTM, we always describe the easting first. And so in this case, um, we're saying that the, uh, this point is going to be, uh, as noted here, 123,732 meters uh, east of the principal meridian, okay? And the principal meridian, the, this, this line that runs down the center of the zone, we always know is 500,000 meters um, uh, east of the origin. So if we add 123 to 500,000, we end up with this number here, 623,733.22 meters east. Um, you can see right away that UTM kind of favors precision because you're working with meters, which are small numbers, but you're working with large distances. So again, the point here being simply that this 623,000 means that we are that far away from the um, origin, we're that far east of the origin. Then we want to get the Y position or our northing. In this case, this position is 4,859,580.26 meters 
north of the equator, which is where our origin is. So the way that we would write this position down is this way right here. We describe our easting first, then our northing, and then we also describe the zone, 13 in this case, they're all labeled, and oftentimes we, often des we, we also designate the, the hemisphere because the, we can also have zone 13 in the southern hemisphere and we want to distinguish those two. Um, if you're working with a military grid system, there are also lettered um, latitudinal zones too, so that in that case you don't necessarily need to um, designate the hemisphere because the lettering uh, tells you where you are uh, in a latitudinal way. Uh, if you work with Google Earth uh, with the UTM, which it allows you to do, that's actually how it works. It gives you those uh, latitudinal designations by letter, uh, which is just the, the military system for doing that. Um, the UTM zone is, as I said earlier, um, appropriate when we're talking about working with um, areas that are at the regional or smaller scale. So you can see here that the lower 48, the continental U.S., is divided across 10 UTM zones. So what that means on a practical level is that you would not use this system for mapping or analyzing areas that are larger than any given zone. So in some cases, states are actually cut across more than one zone. And in fact, that's even the case for Massachusetts right here. You can see that it's cut between zone 18 and zone 19. So if you were doing mapping or analysis of Massachusetts at the whole state level, you would not want to use the UTM um, coordinate system for working with uh, Massachusetts at that scale. And here's just a close-up view looking in Google Earth with the grid lines for, for the UTM system um, uh, on there. And you can see here um, that, again, Massachusetts cut in half in between two zones. And just as a reference here, the S refers to the um, latitudinal uh, um, area. So here, Massachusetts falls within zone 19T, which indicates where it is on the Earth, and then within that zone, you would further describe the position, uh, easting and northing, of a particular location that you are interested in. So the second most important type of um, projected coordinate system is uh, the state plane coordinate system, and that's kind of an interesting one historically, um, because uh, it was developed in the 1930s uh, essentially to create a very accurate, very precise coordinate system for each state. Um, and it works in a way very similarly to UTM in terms of eastings and northings and also using false origin. The complication comes in the fact that every state playing court system is de designed specifically for a specific state. They cannot be used across state lines um, because they've been developed specifically for that place. Now they tend to follow a lot of common practices in terms of uh, the, how the projections are constructed and again it's still using the eastings and northings and the false false origins. Uh, in some cases, particularly in larger states, so you can see here in Texas or in California, you can see there be numerous zones as, as well uh, in order to, again, minimize that distortion that comes from working with um, a curved surface because you're working with smaller areas and projections apply that way. But even in Massachusetts, we have two state playing court, uh, excuse me, two zones within our state playing court system, one being the mainland and the other being the island. Um, the Massachusetts State Plane Court System is based on a Lambert conformal conic projection uh, because the state is east-west trending, so it actually, the cone, as you might imagine, kind of sweeps across the state. Um, the false origin for the Massachusetts uh, system is 200,000 meters east of the central meridian. The central meridian is around 71 and a half degrees west, which is right around Framingham, and 750,000 meters south of Block Island. Um, so what that means on a practical level is that the origin for the coordinate system that we use in Massachusetts for the state plain is actually sitting somewhere in uh, North Carolina <laughs> to give you a sense of uh, how far away it is. But what that does again is it inflates the numbers so that you're always ensured to use um, uh, positive numbers. Um, again, it has two zones, mainland island, um, and you only want to use it uh, within Massachusetts. But again, you can't even use it across the entire state, particularly if you're incorporating the islands. On a practical level, it's just worth knowing that if you work with GIS data that's distributed uh, by the state of Massachusetts through MassGIS, um, that all that data does come in, in that particular um, coordinate system state plane. So it's something that you would need to be familiar with.